Hello and welcome to Talking Bottom. This is episode two of series two, Culture. I am Matt Brooks. I'm Angela Johnson. And I'm Paul Tanter. This episode, one of my favourite ones, this one is kind of the quintessential bottom episode. If I ever have to show bottom to anyone yeah. who's been uninitiated i will generally show them this first because a it's the two-hander yeah. of series two and i think we said last week that series two is the strongest mm-hmm. of all three series of bottom they're really into their swing and yeah. the writing is just so strong in this one it's got all of the strengths hasn't it that you see in other episodes it's got great writing but there's great physicality in it between them their characters are very very established by now they're very comfortable playing them mm. and this is where you see things like ritmail going off on even more sort of manic tangents his flights of fancy is delusion that he himself begins to believe like the entire thing you have to remember the entire thing he plays it like he's getting upset and wound up and having to do these tasks as well but he's hiding the tv at any point he it's all because of him playing this fancy when you watch it back and you know that knowing that richie is playing the entire time just to get eddie (laughs) to spend time with him (laughs) is both tragic and poetic yeah. <laughs> that's such a wife husband sort of i presume like it is sort of yeah. almost counseling thing like yeah. what can you do or well, get rid of the telly and talk to each other more yeah um and that's exactly what richie's orchestrated with this isn't it not not that eddie knows about it otherwise you wouldn't have any bar of it but it's also an episode about boredom isn't it it is which i think is why they confine it entirely to the confines of the flat mm. a bit like the episode in the first series the only place they leave the room for i think is to go into the hallway yeah this yeah. episode feels like a spiritual sequel to contest i mm. really think yes. even i don't know maybe it's in my head but it even feels like eddie's got a little bit more hair in this episode <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's a little bit more channeling fuzzy. Yeah, contest and getting that's probably hair. just because i want to see that but it's it's, well, it's an obvious comparison both episodes are kind of all about the telly even mm. though this one's the absence of the telly, yeah. there's still a lot of television jokes. This one could almost play out like a stage play in that it's, it's in the mm. same location and we have a passage of time. The only point we ever need to suspend that idea is where they have what is essentially a flashback, which is the custody pants competition, mm. which I know isn't really a flashback because it's in real time, but it's kind of cut to it, have it, joke, yeah, yeah. cut back. Yeah. That would be the only thing that would scupper you in terms of like a stage play or something yeah. like that, unless you had some kind of elaborate system of custody pants that you could run yeah. on quickly and what you do there I think or something. you'd have that or happen off screen and mm-hmm. in the interval so they could go mm. from day to night and then just basically the aftermath well I won yeah yeah. yeah yeah absolutely I, I think watching this again it made me think of it as the live show the first yeah. bottom live it's very similar the sort of setup for the first act yeah and this yeah. this episode so like you say it is it is almost like a play yeah. this episode's this episode. like this that when you found out oh they're gonna be doing live episodes no one was like what well that'll mm. never work it's like well yeah it lends itself entirely to yeah. the yeah. stage you've already seen it work twice once in each series where you know that they have the strength to do it entirely mm. within the same location yeah and we've already said i think that the script books are actually written like little mini plays mm. aren't they yeah they're so formatted they clearly like... obviously both mm. being actors and trained actors have have approached it with that in mind this plot is another one of the really simple ones so how did it get phrased on uh, on itunes paul well the way they phrased it on itunes was culture richie and eddie's tv has been repossessed and they are at a complete loss unable to find anything to keep themselves occupied richie decides to challenge eddie to a game of chess even though they don't have all the pieces in their set they decide to improvise dot 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 that's it so we open with the crosswords they're doing what all kids do when they don't know the uh, answers which is Cross- fill in the you know fill in random words and you but see not rude words interestingly yeah. enough Until... Paul has just replicated the body language there of crossing the arms <laughs> <laughs> exactly how they of Eddie's approach to crosswords but yeah. he's into it at first isn't he because it's sort of it's Eddie leading it he's reading it out and... they're giving it a go aren't they they're making yeah. trying to make we a fist of it right in aren't we it's three and a half minutes including the intro titles until we find out oh. there's no television the reveal of no telly when it's, it's, it's a banana skin. It's a wonderful reveal. Usually, yeah. most television, be it sitcom or drama, you'll start with a big wide of whatever the area is. In this one, it starts with a fairly tight two mm-hmm. shot of the two of them. Mm-hmm. You know the space already because we've seen the flat before, but you're right, cut to the wide, where suddenly we see the table with that rim of scum and detritus yeah. that just tells you the TV has been there forever. I noticed today, for the first time, the light coming from the window is bright sunlight. So whereas usually they're in this world in Hammersmith where it's mucky and raining and horrible, 
Bowl. Mm. One of the days where it's nice weather mm. outside and it's sunny, what are they doing? They're sitting inside. They don't even have the TV anymore. They're staying inside and trying to deny themselves the nice day outside. They're mourning the, oh, yeah. the yeah. TV <laughs> and they've got nothing else in their well, minds that, to do but try the crossword. Yeah, sure. and... Well, I think the reason it's daylight just to show very clearly that it's daytime for us to then see it's nighttime later. Right, right. To pay off that joke, to make that more clear. Uh, okay, I did think the sun was particularly bright. It made me wonder mm. if they were like saying, when there's a nice day, these guys will waste it and stay inside. It's a similar thing to Eddie, close the curtains, I'm trying to watch the TV. Yeah, Only yeah. in this instance, they don't even have the TV. They're doing a crossword, mm. which they can't even do because they're filling in random letters. Well, I think it's because not... days merge into one for them, don't they? Because they don't have jobs. So yeah. it's that idea of any day of the week. Always wearing the they're same just, clothes They're just well. going to be sat watching the mm. telly there's nothing else mm. to do life is very depressing yeah. and all they can think about is getting birds yeah. or winding each other yeah. up this has a very mundane feel to it yet in the reality of their lives this isn't a mundane day for them because mm. they don't have the television isn't it a great line why did they take the telly away now so we victimized. don't really live in a world where you'd rent the telly no, that's yeah. quite dated isn't it the threat right. of them taking the yeah. telly away when yeah. when i first watched it i think i understood it but we'd never rented a telly yeah sure. well, i guess then. you could even think it's the bailiffs have come around and once, taken it away once they say rum belows mm-hmm. uh-huh. Right, let's talk a little bit about their inability to play a crossword. Yeah. You know, that this is an alien thing to them. That I like the, clues. the fact that Richie, like, kind of inadvertently discovers the rules. Like, yeah, he, he yeah. thinks, oh, but, oh, it's a good cheat. We're due to the rules. Yeah, yeah. But it comes out without on his own. Yeah, this, but it's a wily plan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. this yeah. cunning way of cheating. It, it, the way we'll circumvent the actual rules that I don't understand. Sure. Although, I did actually wonder earlier, I don't know if I know a six-letter word for Ironmonger. I don't either, I don't but I actually real, had a Google, it? and I think what it would either be is Draper, Grocer, or Seller. Okay. Fucking hell, I'd never get that, <laughs> ever, in a million years. Yeah. Now, they're, they're stupid rules that they impose themselves. None of them, obviously, <laughs> would work out in real life, but there's inaccuracies within it as well. Viz books, but spelling Harold really, yeah. really wrong. That one make this word work because of those books like we misspelled one word yeah. misspell all of them and yeah. then if you were could misspell them it's brilliant the no way they draw it at out all. the way they draw it out I'm beginning to think these yeah. books isn't right you know, yeah. maybe just, just maybe and then the xylophone fish guy yeah. 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 I'm amazed that Eddie knew that xylophone began with an X though I didn't <laughs> yeah. think it began with a Z it? it's wonderful stupidity that has them going hang on Harold only has but then getting the wrong amount of letters oh, in that yeah, yeah. Uh, that I think isn't quite clear enough if you don't see the word in front of you. And well, also you if you're dyslexic, you... like me. I, I didn't right. get it straight away. Right, right. So right. I tried writing it down. take a little yeah. couple of seconds to get that gag, I yeah, think, yeah, sure. because yeah. It, it's sort of, they're catching up. You can hear it in the laugh. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. Hang on, Harold only has five letters. And in your head, you're thinking, no, it's yeah. six. So I've got a niggle here. Mm. Like, Harold, just put down Harold, that's got six letters. And yeah. then it's like, well, how does that leave us with fish, four letters? Fish has four letters. Why didn't they put down fish? Right. They're going to be putting down Harold later. Well, they they moved on from fish. Why didn't they come to fish four letters? Put down fish. That See, fits. Even the level wow. of confusion that we're wrapping ourselves into here makes have me you... makes me understand why Eddie wanted to just put bollocks. I know, I know. I love the ripping up of the. It's so childish and petulant, isn't it? That's as well, really. just that. All right, they're not at all. That's the child flipping over the Monopoly board at the yeah, end, yeah. or throwing the cards across the room. How much must Harold not only have hated Richie and Eddie, but also his own dog? <laughs> yeah. To have made them <laughs> yeah. eat his dog. I, I know that that poor dog didn't do a thing that's yeah. if they lose at the annual eat my dog haha ha, I or, win although do you think right if you're Harold and maybe your dog's ill like it's dying oh, and oh, right, funny now, oh no don't but, go because now dog. not only can I make them eat my dog but they, I can make them eat dog. my cancerous save the, save syphilitic the dog it's oh. a way of getting rid of it yeah yeah, yeah. To put him down. now rather than doing a, a kindness to my dog and ha- giving him the, the, the Mr. Chinnery injection I'm going to get Richie and Eddie to lose a bet and have to eat him you do wonder what the bet was don't you like that they what were they going to get out of that deal they've yeah. never won a bet have they no I don't think you so. see them Harold could have tried doing a deal with Jamal in the kebab place <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah maybe that's what it was maybe yeah. it was that we're going to we're going to supply the meat to the <laughs> to the kebab shop but if you lose this bet then you've got to eat it there's a lot of dog eating in Hammersmith in Boston isn't there <laughs> it's happened a couple of times dog shit kebab and cat shit kebab what is that in one of the live episodes I think <laughs> yeah. yeah the not understanding of the rules of crossword is kind of foreshadowing the chess game later and it just sort of shows Richie just doesn't get invited to play games from back in his childhood only his, child it makes sense that his character wouldn't know how to play 
to play against, yeah. you know. And he's so excited to have somebody to play with, isn't he? He like, is. The entire episode is that, really. Yeah, I mean, later on, yeah. you can see the kind of manic levels of, if that was a child, you'd be giving him medication to try and calm him down. For ADHD. Yeah, yeah. The, the dancing to try and expel the manic energy from yeah. him. That's yeah. very childlike. When you do remember that he's orchestrated all of this in order to spend more time with Eddie, more sense. he yeah. ruins it for himself, yeah. doesn't he? Because actually, Eddie's on board with playing these games with him because he's so bored out of his time yeah. in mind. Uh, but he pushes it to the nth degree, doesn't he? It's a lack of attention, isn't it? It's mm-hmm. a short attention span with Richie. So Eddie agrees, okay, we'll do this. But then Richie has to go, forget this. I've got something else that I want to focus on now. Forget the chess. Let's play James Bond. Yeah. Let's and then it. just the running out of the room, all that kind of thing to get his smoking jacket. Like He's just, it, everything is the next brilliant idea. At the so, same time. But this all... is, it's so perfect that Eddie and Richie are renting because yeah. they can't afford it. It makes perfect sense. And they're not able to even cover the rent because... <laughs> Well, first of all, Eddie, well, it's just complete exposition, whereas Eddie was like, well, they take the telly away, so you know why we did. Well, yeah, did. I love the way no, they draw I don't. that out. Yeah, yes, yeah. of course you do. You fucking do know. Yeah. You were here. Why are you saying you don't know? I love that. Yes, you do, Edward. <laughs> yes. Uh, full title uh-huh. before it's going to launch into. Yeah. And then what I love is that Eddie's obviously come back pissed. And so as a kid, I always thought he was tricked and yeah. bought magic beans. Ah, uh, okay, yeah. The emphasis on cost coincidentally, the mm. exact money that No, no, seen. I always thought Eddie was conned. He met a con man, and when Richie says coincidentally, this is because the con man said, how much have you got? Oh, well, I happen to have magic beans that cost the same amount as yeah, that. And Eddie, probably in a drunk state, was conned by someone, and that's why he's mm. clinging to, no, these definitely are magic he beans. He seems so sad at yeah. that bit. Eddie's resolutely waiting for them to spring out of the earth yeah. and climb into the sky. It is an interesting one, that, because it's not often that you hear that Eddie's been, even though he's in many ways more stupid than Richie yeah. on other occasions, you wouldn't expect Eddie to be hoodwinked by mm. something like yeah. that. I know. But I love the way that Aid delivers. They are magic beans, you know? <laughs> so he's like upset. really, and really quite upset that he's yeah. having a go at him about it because yeah. he's convinced that they are. Did you guys get the Sir Edmund joke at the time? I didn't get that as a kid. Mm, no, yeah. probably well, not. I haven't, the I haven't exploration. Got it now. What do you mean? So exploration. Be- because he says we'll be needing oxygen masks before we get to the top mm. of that one, the joke is Sir Edmund Hillary, I think. That was the joke. And I only got that once I was an adult. And then, oh, yes, I get that now. Yeah, oh. yeah you're right. It's I a fairly gentle gag, good. you know, but. Yeah. Still good. Yeah, it's so, very good. But I don't think there's a bad line in this episode. Uh, this is a hard episode to analyse because it's going to be a breaking down line but after this line is it. after line. We could line, literally you know? sit here and just read yeah. out every yeah. line, which we're not going to do. This no. is very with now and I like this one. It's just instantly yeah. quotable. Every single line's a quotable line. It's the back and forth between the mm. two of them. Yes, it's phenomenal. Bottom is often a world of places and people that have names that you could say does exactly what it says on the tin. The world uh, building in this one is great, yeah. isn't it? With all of those. Yeah. Are you yeah. talking about Dr. O'Grady? <laughs> Dr. O'Grady's Personal <laughs> Organ Enhancement Clinic. There's no mistaking what that place does yeah. at all, is there? What What kind of organ? Your personal look at Yeah, I understand. Yep, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Not subtle. The way Richie suddenly goes from accusatory to completely embarrassed and wants to change the subject. Sure. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's both of their fault that they don't have the TV or mm. didn't have the money to have yeah. the TV. He wanted to start the fight and then yeah. he's going to see it through. And then I love the camera angles on this. Often, when Richie comes to the front in the kitchen and then yeah. the way Eddie's kind of stalking behind him there's, and does the five doors along. Yeah, yeah. There's several moments where someone's like near the camera, either looking just down or away from it. One of the others will sort of step behind them but later on when Eddie is worried because Richie's about to find out that he sold off half his chest yeah set. I think that's the best oh. ever Eddie aside yeah, yeah. the but, fourth uh, wall breaking on yeah. that but then like, Rick sort of in. slowly walking into frame with that kind of what? what's going on you yeah. know what's going on here look on his face there is a lot of interesting and very well done camera work in this it absolutely, absolutely yeah. reminds me of Steptoe and Son yeah. when you often see Harold in the foreground and Albert behind yeah. him and they're having a conversation but Harold's performing to camera it's set up with this sort of accusatory thing back and forth between yeah. them. And while I'm talking about Steptoe and Son, I might be leaping ahead again, but there is an episode of Steptoe and Son where they play chess. It opens with them right. playing chess and right. they're using different household objects. Uh, really. Okay, yeah. It's, it. So Aid, yeah. Aid said on Twitter recently that he kind of stole elements, him and Rick yeah. stole elements of Steptoe and Son for bottom, Well, didn't this he? is most definitely. They, it opens with them playing a game of chess right. and they've only got a handful of pieces that are actually chess pieces. Right, okay. One's an egg cup. They're playing and basically the the only thing that that is a setup for is just that Albert's forgotten what he is playing. So he's like, that's not my queen, that's that's my king. And it's 
it's like the pepper pot's your queen. Yeah. And, you know, it's like, how many other of my yeah. pieces have you been moving? So you can cheating, see that the inspiration behind it. And Was this early black and white step toe or later it's colour? It's not. It's actually colour. It's series six. I okay. looked it up. And it's called The Cuckoo in the Nest. It's basically where a con man turns up from Australia claiming to be Albert's oh, eldest I son. That one. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's a classic. I thought, I thought he actually was his son. I don't think it was a con man claiming to no, be. Maybe, no, maybe I think it's, I it's remember he brags, oh, bruise. you silly pommies with this weak drinks you have. Let me get some proper drink. Here you are, Fosters. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh God! So Week three point two percent. Get this yeah. down your gallery. Yeah. <laughs> but I just I delighted in seeing that because I obviously saw bottom first. Yeah. You watch them and like, you're like, oh, that's where they would have got the idea for just what can we have instead of chess pieces? It's quite like, an obvious thing to come nod. to, I think, as well, isn't it? Yeah. It's just well, then being rag and bone men with really yeah. crap about their flat. Yeah, absolutely. It's, and Richie yeah. and Eddie are very much the same. And I love yeah. that it's like, well, we are British after all, mm-hmm. aren't we? When Eddie's like, we'll we'll figure out a way to play. <laughs> one does have a very royal family vibe with them talking about the television and stuff we've, we've mentioned that comparison before I mean this episode is one of those episodes that, that does step outside of itself slightly at the end when they're doing stuff towards camera and referring There's a lot referring of to breaking the fourth stuff. wall yeah. in this episode there's Eddie obviously with the discovery that he's sold off all the chess pieces the way that Aid kind of stalks up to the camera with that one and immediately yeah. is kind of shaking with yeah. with fit so and like what's he done talking to the audience behind mm. the radio it's the first time you really become involved in Eddie's little world I'd say that's the biggest breaking of the fourth wall yeah. mm. can we talk about the, his actual plan what he was doing there with the chess set well each any piece fucking sense. each piece was worth 75 quid yeah. <laughs> so why didn't they sell two of them and buy the TV back? I don't understand why you didn't sell the whole set right. all at once. Right, yeah. first of all, like, <laughs> first of all, yeah, absolutely. Why is there five pieces left when they, each one's they worth would, 75 quid? They would be worth more as a set, 100%. <laughs> That's really strange. And now the other thing, the soap in a key. Now, from what I understand, you put a key into a soap and then take away the soap and then fill it with some sort of metal yeah. or plaster. Yeah, yeah. And then you have a copy. copy. But what he's done <laughs> is left put it a in key there. In yeah. the soap, and then taking it away somewhere, made a copy, and then put it back in the but, soap, and put it back where the key was originally but, hiding. But then he's made a key of soap, so yeah. you can't take a key made of soap and use that to make another key. I don't think. Exactly. It doesn't well, make any and sense. you can't use that to open the thing because it will break. I don't think he has made one of soap. He's no, just you, made a copy from. But you, you, you see, take it, you see it, and eat it. it. Yeah, yeah. But he eats. I think he's just swallowing a key. That's a metal key that yeah. he swallows. I th- I always thought it was a key made of soap. Really? That he was eating. No, that's yeah. a metal key. Yeah. It shines. Uh, okay. you can well, see right. I mean, obviously, it's probably not a metal key that he swallows, yeah. but that's exactly what he's swallowing at that point. Choose it, I think. If I'm... Yeah. Well, now, or I'm not a criminal mind, but I think what you do is is press the key into a cake of soap. Yeah. Then you can take that it's imprint, imprint. Yeah. get the copy made from that. Same point. In the original key, but you're key, right. It doesn't make any Why sense. Why is the key in it? I love that. I must speak to the cleaning lady. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. yeah. I've got one. Yeah, again, Richie, you're not upper class, you're not <laughs> aristocratic. Yes, and that's all that, I mean, great Auntie Dorothy's antique chess set, he's so mm-hmm. boastful, isn't he, about it? And it's kept in his strong box, yeah. which is covered in dust bunnies. Yes. I love the detail of how much yeah. dust and cobwebs how there are around the flat. did Eddie steal these then? Because they're not on display, I suppose, it could have happened a while ago. I always assumed that this is the box that Eddie goes to and he's been dipping into mm. it over time. Probably a bit like the IOUs in Dumb and Dumber. I'll just take one and it'll be okay and no yeah, one will notice. Yeah. notice. Every yeah. now And so it's a good 75 quid every now and then, but he's gone through 27 of them because yeah, there's only five sure. left. Yeah, and if they're 75 quid each, that's a long time, isn't it? Yeah. He has been doing yeah. it that slowly and it's taken Richie that long to actually look <laughs> at the set. Yeah. How many times have you done the... <clears throat> Pardon? Pardon? Yeah. This, <laughs> that is one of so many quotable bits in this episode. There's a lot as I was watching this episode going, yep, that's like something I use in everyday life. Yep, that one too. Richie still not catching on <laughs> is what I love about it as well yeah, because well. Eddie manages to talk him out of it as well. He's like, oh, never mind, you right. know, we'll, 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 we'll muddle on through. We're British, aren't we? And then he's been yeah. going on about Wellington. It's and... the British that brings him out of it, isn't it? He's just like, yes, yes. you are right. Yes, I, yes, yeah. my friend yeah. Eddie, you are right. Yes. Which again made me think of sort of modern Brexiteers. If you need an idiot to fall for a stupid plan, appeal to a sense of patriotism and he'll go for it. That sums Richie up in a nutshell. Yeah, isn't it, yeah. really? Let's go over the first two games then. Yeah, yeah. Did anyone else think when Richie leaned on the organ that when he leapt up excitedly and ran across to Eddie that he was going to say, let's play some music or let's learn the organ? Goes for something totally different, yeah, of course. Yeah, it's an obvious Sug- one, Suggests it? a game, Eddie shoots it down and then Richie has to go into one-upmanship of, oh. I'm going to cling on to this idea even if it kills me, even if you change every aspect oh, of it. I, no, I've always thought the, donkey stuff. the music just 
is the representation of giving Ta-da. Richie a time to think. I've thought of something. He's done it, he's done it before in the, right, in the right. sort of, hang on, in, in the Miss World. Yeah, he's yeah. the exact exactly. same thing, isn't it? When it's like, hang on, where's the other tenor? So it's sort of just Richie's chance to sort of stop for a minute. Yeah. <laughs> Reset his mind and then think about what he's doing next. Tiddlywinks. I hate the, that the joke. Com- the comedy of the I names of these games. I hated that joke of Tiddlywinks. I found it stupid. What we ended up in hospital last yeah, time. That yeah, that one, for, that just reminds me of something from the Beano or something. I'd, like, I'd seen it in old yeah. crap joke books or something. I never liked it, even as what, a kid. Tiddlywinks it, in itself, though, is quite a just amusing childish word, isn't it? It but then is. I know what you mean. The what were they doing to end up in hospital? You yeah. What what and rules they've changed in Tiddlywinks? It's a stretch of the imagination to try mm. and easily imagine what they did that put them in hospital. Therefore, mm. if you've got to stretch too much for it, for it to work, maybe then just, then happened. does the joke work? You know, maybe that's what happened. They stretch too far got for them, it. Got them yeah. in the hospital. Yeah. <laughs> maybe they were doing Tiddlywinks with ninja stars with or their, something with their bell ends. <laughs> and then Spud, oh, I always go back to that. And then Spud Gun came in and fired <laughs> potato from his penis. <laughs> when he loses the game of. The pin the tail on the donkey okay. that becomes put the piece of sellotape on the fridge I thought as a youth watching this that VD because I did, wasn't aware of what venereal disease was that was just something to do with losing mm. you know VD, VD, VD. Yeah. yeah it's an odd one isn't it I'd say it yeah. quite a lot without knowing what it, it meant it reminds me of other cultures and other countries where they have very creative ways of swearing like yeah. uh, some Italian thing or something it's like oh fuck the virgin we're very lazy with our swear word usually in England but we don't, yeah, is not. But something like, oh, fuck my mouth, or something like that, is yeah. usually quite inventive and funny. You know, it's before Richie loses. <laughs> don't, don't fuck my mouth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this episode almost has a catchphrase of, we haven't got a... Right, right. There's so many things they don't have. The language in this one, yeah. where it Back just goes forth. from sort of donkey to chicken. Yeah. Yeah. We haven't got like a sausage. That's better. Yeah. We haven't yeah. got a sausage. You know, like the not a sausage is a saying as well. That kind of larking back to which that. Which actually is a lie, because later on they're using a sausage on the chessboard. Ah, but ah. I, I read online that that's a plastic sausage, but I'm not too sure. Oh. I've always thought it's one of those kind of vacuum packed ones. <laughs> I didn't know plastic sausages existed. Why do you need so a plastic sausage? So it's a toy sausage? one from a kid's set or something. I suppose right. in a similar way to any of the other plastic stuff like this. Okay. Any of that shit in the house, um, you know. Okay. I know what you mean. They have got a sausage, so yeah. there is a little bit yeah. of a niggle with that one, yeah, isn't right, there? there we are. Did you notice how closely Richie watches Eddie? Like, like, so like a fucking hawk. <laughs> following behind him. Yeah, yeah. yeah like, We've skipped, though, the... We'll have to improvise and the, what, the, the savage, eye. the savage <laughs> eye poke, poke to the yeah. eye. Yeah. So that would blind him. I mean, that violent, that is a really violent eye This guy. episode <laughs> is actually very unviolent. I think that might be the only bit of violence up until the fight. The yeah. fight, yeah. But, but then what a that's superb the best finale. Fight as well. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I guess it works better because it's been yeah. so held back and they're yeah. so pissed off at each the, other. The yeah. built up so much. Yeah. The tension yeah. is building and building throughout. After Richie becomes very, very annoyed at Eddie winning, he, he, tries, he tries to downplay to. it. But yeah, the, he's the, furious. The the look on his face that he then switches to makes me think for a moment: is he going to go for something sexual? He sort of pulls this kind of the right. pervy face, and but then you, he's on the other side of the flat as well. Yeah, just, yeah. Well, it's me- it's meant to make you think: what on earth is he yeah. going to suggest? What is he going to propose? <laughs> okay, and we don't know, do we? Yeah, I'm, you never find out what he was going to suggest because it's build up, build up, build up. I'd see how much custard you can have in your underpants. You're right. It's Eddie. Says, Eddie says it's that. Eddie who foolishly suggests something that he knows he would lose because. Because Richie has the advantage. He dismisses it until he says, well, you've got the advantage. He says, oh, you're right. Yeah, well, let's do that then. Because yeah. he I said... Think, if my... I think I've always thought he was going to suggest chess at that point. Right. But you're right. Like, we don't actually know. The custody pants moment, that kind of puts me in mind, or it reminds me of the fact that Bottom is very cartoon-esque. Because it reminds mm-hmm. me, and I realise this is with modern knowledge looking back, it always makes me think of the cutaways on Family Guy. Yeah, absolutely. Where you can go to a gag, often in live-action comedy, you can't do because cutaways usually involve extra filming and, you know, and in this mm-hmm. case, clean up and that kind of thing. They do them in Father Ted a fair bit, don't they? Yeah, yeah. That's uh, Father Ted has those sort of like more surreal, surreal moments, yeah. doesn't it? Yeah. Well, the young ones did it loads mm. of the time. I'm calling it a cutaway, even though it's actually it's supposed to be in real time that they're doing it. It's mm. not something that happens in the past. It's something so it's, they, they, they flash they, forward and then flash well, forward again. Well, a flash mm. to the present. Custody yeah. pants. Okay, we jump to the end of it, mm. and then we jump to after it's I the cleanup. I thought clean it up. was a dream the first time I saw it because of the wavy line transition. Because of the doodle doodle doodle. Yeah. 
Yeah, it is almost like it's a fantasy. Imagine that they have, if this but... happened. The splats <laughs> are like very self contained, if you notice. It's just like a the... bit on the wall there. Yeah, the custard yeah. splats are yeah. just like, there's one like over one of the paintings yeah. in the background just on their face, yeah. isn't yeah. it? And... It's, it's almost like they aren't liquid and they're yeah. made of rubber or something well, like that. Well, you can see yeah. the difference between the colour in what's on yeah, Aid's yeah. head when it's dripping as well. Yeah, yeah. But I love the, just the size difference in the underpants. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Very clearly a big solid build yeah. around him. Yeah. Yeah. It looks like he's genuinely struggling to walk with whatever is in that. It's a ma- is it plastic? I think he's selling it quite well. So if you look mm. at it closely, you can see. I mean, it's not a big thing full of custard mm. at the top of it. Um, a tray or something. Yeah, you can see, and, yeah. and then they've just covered that yeah. with a bit of yellow. Yeah. yeah I... One thing I don't like in that sequence is Eddie's sort of mugging frown sad face at the mm. end it might be because he's got cuss on his face and then the director said oh we need to see the expression a bit more but it kind of puts me in mind of when Reese Shearsmith plays Kathy Carter Smith or when Ricky Gervais is playing the genie in extras mm-hmm. and it's sort of that oh, you know mugging. Gurning it is of, a yeah. bit but I wondered if it was because we're in this sort of fantasy dream sequence thing whether it was he's overriding it yeah he's overriding yeah. the custard yeah. Yeah. yeah it's meant to just be that little bit of <laughs> mad cartoon yeah, yeah, thing isn't yeah. it so he is overplaying it because I... that's what it I mean Rick's overplaying stumbling around <laughs> with <laughs> yeah. how those would you yeah. not to sit down so, of course don't sit what on earth would you yeah. sit down for am yeah. I remembering is there anything in Fluff where he actually slips or have I just like, I've just imagined that it almost looks like Rick nearly slips but I don't I... think he does Talking about the difference between liquid and the fake liquid, you can see that behind Rick, they've actually put some of what I presume is custard or some kind of yellow liquid on the floor. The way the consistency is on the carpet, yeah. that's liquid. So it's possible he might have slipped on something. Yeah, yeah. I think maybe it's just that he does look like he nearly slips. It's so silly, isn't it? But the custody pants tournament. like Tournament <laughs> as well and, as two of them. <laughs> and when it comes yeah. back as well, and it's like Eddie's just got a massive mop. I love yeah. mopping the, the sofa. Yeah. yeah. If you buy the script book of series two, there's some wonderful behind the scenes pictures of the crew setting up the yeah. uh, custody pants. Yeah. They've got some lovely pictures in those books. Yeah, it's black and white as well, isn't yeah. it? And it's just... Yeah. If you look on eBay or Amazon, there's usually the books going for second hand for a couple of quid. Yeah, Definitely highly worth recommend. Buying. They're little Bibles for yeah. Bible fans, aren't they? I used to read from them with my friend when we were only like 10 on a holiday, yeah. acting it out together just in the car it was only recently that i saw a bit of behind the scenes footage from this episode on youtube that someone sent me it was those guys rehearsing the fight so aid swinging the Uh, chair and as even as they were rehearsing the fight they were having the sound effects you know so they get everything good and they were really really taking it seriously yeah you're right there yeah yeah fine because that part of it would have been pre-recorded before the audience got there because the amount of time it would take to do the fight we'll put the link to that in the description of this episode in series one with the pliers fight they filmed that without the audience as well didn't they I suppose it's A, just a bit too dangerous, and B, they probably just will have to do more than one take so they know it's going to be tiresome for the audience to watch it. Yeah, exactly. Stuff like that requires a lot of moving around Mm. and stopping and restarting and reshooting stuff. Mm. You you know, you can't do stuff like that in real time without boring the audience. Yeah. Yeah. Right, so we're finally into the chess, which is the lion's share of the episode. It's such a big setup. Yeah. literally <laughs> of the chess set chess board something mm. of an obvious gag to have prawns instead of pawns yeah, yeah. I used to call them prawns as a kid did you? yeah Just I think it's, a, it's, it's a yeah. common it's a common thing that people have misheard and therefore so yeah this episode really emphasises them as kids with yeah. not understanding rules prawns that's what we all did as kids this is how children think grown-ups are. Mm. And yeah. just Eddie finding things around and about to use as the pieces. Like, you can actually see them in the background. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. You notice them. You can see the skeleton. And, and, and weirdly, there's a crown on top of the cactus already in the background. Oh, is there really? Oh, is there yeah. really? Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's, probably a mistake. Yeah, yeah, it's there already, obviously. Okay. I mean, I, I haven't really looked at this, but I did look and see if there's any <laughs> sort of, like, list online as to what's there. So... Yeah. We've not mentioned Daddy's sauce, but obviously everyone remembers that. And what? it's the what? miniature. Why is brown sauce the king? I'm not a fan of brown sauce. Maybe maybe I missed well, the... Cook, is it just it's because brilliant. it's so yeah. popular? Yeah, it's brilliant. Brown sauce is brilliant. It's not... the king. Yeah, definitely. Those pieces have become a meme in themselves. So probably because I'm in the echo chamber of a lot of bottom groups on Facebook, but I've often seen a picture of a Spider-Man, a skeleton, mm. a sausage and a cactus saying, if you recognise these and know what they could be used for, you're a fan of Bottom or something sure. like that. On a similar point, this episode has Rick Mel's kind of weird wiggly finger thing. He has done that as uh, Amber Starr, I think, as well. 
Right. But it's hard to describe. Double maybe. jointed, isn't it? Yeah, he? it's just kind of like he holds his fingers together and it kind of acts like a worm. Now, yeah. I treat that like a Masonic handshake where I will do it in rooms sometimes, oh. see if yeah, anyone yeah. spots. Oh, Rick Mail. Yeah. Once or twice happened, but most of the time I'm just a weirdo in the corner with my fingers. <laughs> You haven't been asked to join the Masons yet then, no? What the fuck is Matt doing? I don't know. I think he's having some kind of episode. (laughs) When he says he's always looked a bit Slavic, he manages to relax all the muscles on his face. So you know Mm. how when someone has a stroke, half their face collapses? Mm. He just manages to make all of his face collapse. (laughs) Are Slavic people particularly renowned for their chess skills? Is it because Gary Kasparov is world chess champion or something? I think so, yeah. I think think that would be the link there. But it's Um, quite impressive how he manages to make his entire face almost collapse. It's that rubber face of Rick's, isn't it? Yeah. You're usually used to seeing it so full of of some kind of expression so him yeah. completely Deflated blanking face. it yeah. is, is just like quite a sight to behold I was going to ask about if you guys noticed if one of Eddie's pieces was a particular item but in case it's one of Matt's questions I'm not going to mention it until the end because I thought I spotted something I'd not previously spotted no I th- no no you can you can so I what? think Eddie has a pork pie with something mm. shoved into the top of it that's what yeah. I think as well. Yeah. Uh, that rings a bell. Okay. Is that a question later? It's not a question okay. later, so you can talk about it. Okay. Right, What's yeah. The I think, because you're right, I think there is a pork pie there, but yeah. that's not listed at all, so I don't know whether yeah. I was just seeing things because yeah. I like my pork. Do you guys think Richie actually looks quite dapper with his raincoat Absolutely. on inside out? I always thought, well, in the script book, it says Richie grabs a raincoat, he mm. thinks it looks like a spoky jacket. I think it does it look does. quite it, a bit like a spoke. It, it looks quite good. good. Yeah. yeah, the lining is that colour, isn't yeah, it? It's the perfect yeah, colour for the. Satin. It should have been a bit more off, a bit more yeah. rough. I mean, you can tell it's not a smoking jacket, but at a glance, yeah. especially that port, that cunt <laughs> on the other side of the, you know, oh, you're still watching telly, are you? What? What was that? Pardon? Yeah. <laughs> no, it's a smoking jacket. <laughs> so it's the only thing is, oh, you were fucking broke up, so dried out. That bit. I always think of the bottom fluff because mm. that's where one Mercury. of the more famous bottom fluffs is when he, he opens the door, the conservatory window slash door, does the mm, brilliant evening and then keeps on fucking up the mm. mat because he says, has Matt sorted out a problem with moss. Amos? He keeps on going, moss. has Moss sorted out? Yeah. And then the second time he goes, Moss, oh, who the fuck is Moss? Yeah. He actually explains it as well. He's like, it's a cross between Matt yeah. and Amos, you see. Yeah. <laughs> but it's like three times, doesn't he? Yeah. Where he just can't get it. I've never watched Emmerdale Farm, so I've got no well, idea if they were Emmerdale genuine characters. Years then. and years and yeah. years. I think mm. it's well, it's even a joke in it, and they've got time to cram yeah. in more yeah. story because it <laughs> that yeah. lives in the word farm. I love the idea that Richard sat watching Emmerdale Farm. Yeah. That would be his highlight of his day. Because it's, day. A, it's a class thing. What does he like seeing farmers making him feel more upper class or something? I don't know. I only ever used to watch Coronation Street. Wasn't allowed to watch EastEnders when I was older. Funnily enough, allowed to watch Bottom. I got into Emmerdale a little bit just because of Bottom. It's like, okay, where would that go? I remember we turned on once because we used to hear it play in and turn over immediately. Yeah. But I remember turning on once and there was someone saying like, where are my beans? (laughs) Something like that, honestly. (laughs) Okay, let's have a quick word from our sponsor. Pure 100% pure soft vegetable lard is exactly what it says it is. Pure vegetable lard. So Richie has what he thinks is a smoking jacket on, goes mm-hmm. to actually have a cigarette. When I was that age, I didn't really get until I started smoking that it's actually fucking horrible to breathe that smoke through your nose. Yeah, he's especially yeah. if proper, c- yeah. Coppers, but I don't think he's even yeah. acting there. For all the references of cigarettes in Bottom, hide the fags. For all the mm-hmm. times we see an ashtray full of cigarettes, I think this is the only time mm-hmm. we ever see any of them smoking. I've got a feeling there's one other time, but I can't place it. Right, you're right. You're right. right. It's you're one right. of the few times. It's for Richie certainly, because yeah. he doesn't know how to smoke them either. Just <laughs> clearly. <laughs> And this improvised cigarette holder is the height of sophistication. Has mm. anyone ever tried to, to jam the end of a cigarette? You can't jam a cigarette into a, in the end of a biro properly. Never tried. doesn't work. No, not tried. No. I think a cigarette holder is mainly a female thing, isn't it? You, yeah. It's not really something for guys. No, I wouldn't. that's why it's even yeah. more ludicrous that Richie's playing some know. both. Chaps are more sort of uh, cigars and monocles. A, a really throwaway joke. I love the yoghurt that's growing cress and it's the one that you started in the Gulf War yeah. as yeah. a thing as like a mental note. I remembered that during the Gulf War. Yeah. How many years would that have been? Gulf from... War 1 as well. Yeah. <laughs> Gulf War 1 I think started in 1990. Right. So it's 1992 for them. Yeah. So yeah. so it's been going on for two years. Not quite as bad as how it sounds now. If you wanted to really overemphasize the gag it would be that you started during the Falklands or something like mm. that. I like the sound effect of the kind of crispy crunchy yoghurt there. <laughs> yeah. It's not yeah. a bottom like sound effect it really is a natural one 
I think because it's such the, a visually gross. Is it breaking through crest? Isn't yeah, it? but it's not a. <laughs> no, as, as it's it not OTT. Normally, yeah. It's genuine, isn't it? It's, well, not genuine, but it sounds. Mm. Is it similar to the Eddie shaving a tongue sort of sound? Is it that kind of? No, it's not no, even no. that pronounced. Right, it's just right. a very slight. Yeah, yeah. But it's not OTT. It's not yeah. cartoon. It's quite genuinely what it would sound like to break through some crest into a yogurt beneath. There's something that me, me and Paul can't quite remember properly. Now, there was a Rick Mao convention. It that, was after he died. Yeah, it, it was, was a celebration of him. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, at that event, I remember that they had Esther Ransons for sale there, and I got a round of Esther Ransons. Now, Paul mm. swears blindly that didn't happen, but... Well, yeah, they were. For, they were. There was a special thing behind the bar, I think. I think you guys are misremembering, but the way I remember it is that you and me, Matt... So, Angela, we didn't really know you that well at this point. Matt, you and I were at a table. We met a couple of other bottom fans. We were chatting to them. And we said, hey, we should get the bar here to do us an Esther Ranson. Let's see if they have the ingredients for it. And we went to the bar. They didn't have marmalade. They had something else. They had nearly the ingredients. And we got perno, ouzo, something else and salt. You know, there was one key thing missing. What did they taste like? But I remember... Fucking horrible! Yeah, of course. It tasted like (laughs) vinegar with a slightly jammy... After okay. like there was a big dollop of. Like, I've got a recollection yeah. that they had done some sort of I a promotional sign, a thing, sign saying it's right, but maybe it wasn't well, quite the correct thing. Yeah, I've, I think it probably wouldn't have been the exact ingredients, but they were maybe saying, "Can you do a cocktail tonight called the Esther Anson? Well, I think that might have been what it was. Well, I have pictures from the event, and I have pictures of us holding the cocktails. I have a close-up picture of the cocktail. I don't have anything of a sign saying they were for sale. Oh, and sure, I, it was behind the bar. I think I would have taken a picture of it, but yeah, I might not have done we okay. was with a guy dressed as Alan Bastard I've got a picture of us with yeah. the guy dressed as Alan Bastard and there was a woman there dressed as Drop Dead Fred as well yes. yeah that's right. to surmise we had a taste of either the exact or a very near approximation of the Esther Ranson and we can confirm they're fucking disgusting mm. they were they weren't cheap either they I mean, weren't I cheap no. I stupidly got a round of them I got four of them but that's one of the things I love about this episode of Bottom is how much joy and fun they get out of a sort of what you just got left right lying around your house and in your back of your booze cupboard yeah. and with with food as well so there's like yeah. so many mentions to custard and yeah prunes and olives and you know all the kind of like yeah. things that That's you've just got hanging around the house when you're in a because they're not yeah. going to go out to the shops obviously huh. and, and no. get anything in especially for this night even though they've got nothing better to do oh, a slight niggle when he says oh we need some umbrellas that's what this is missing <laughs> and you hear a laugh from the audience straight away because not for a second do you oh, think right. they're going to yeah. come back with small umbrellas it's right, going to be right. and then it gets in do you think you saw the gag coming for, uh, I've always me. wondered whether so Signposted. It's been a retake that they're laughing already at that, yeah, maybe, or whether maybe. they've already seen the person in the corner with the props or something. Right, right. Um, because you're right, the fact the audience laugh does ruin it a bit mm. because you sort of already know that, but you know there's a gag coming anyway, yeah, no matter yeah. what it would be. But it's one of the only times you really see Eddie actually going Goes fully into it. Richie's mad little world and he's kind of smiling, isn't yeah. he? And he's kind well, of going along with it. It's not like, for him yet. He's just going, like, oh, all right, you'll play a game of chess. That's not yeah. too bad. Well, he's and being he's... entertained by him because there's nothing else. Yeah. But yeah. it's it's that beautiful little affection moment as well where he says that's what I love about you Richie you're completely insane and obviously that, that manic Rick's laugh is his best manic laugh that is possibly the only time Eddie displays any kind of affection mm. for Richie and even uses the word love I know you could say it's in a slightly derogatory fashion because he's saying it's your insanity I love mm. but he's expressing some kind of love for his friend he's allowing Richie carte blanche to just indulge these weird whims you're right as you say he hasn't yet been kept there all night by Richie and at the moment mm. he's still got a cocktail in front of him and the game is ahead of him so yeah. I think now because it's revealed that Richie he doesn't know how to play chess I don't think he's postponing it because he doesn't know I think he's just childish stupid and overexcited and he goes yeah. oh let's have a dance despite the fact mm. there's no music on which yeah. is fucking weird then it's almost yeah. an afterthought I don't know how to play chess well that's yeah. the opening thing isn't yeah. it like, oh, yeah I, I don't, don't think know. he's been stalling I think he's mm. genuinely just been getting so excited about playing the game and then suddenly he's remembered yeah. oh I don't actually know how to play chess the way Rick plays the excitement and the manicness I think is so special in this scene and this episode the way he explodes this energy is not something you ever really see in a sitcom from an actor so mm. if you're sat there in the audience watching it and you're seeing him literally do I'm not trying to do an impression but do the mm. that's not something you're used to seeing in sitcom acting 
It feels mm -hmm. quite special watching that. This character is so big and the actor is able to play it this way. Study you know? madness. Yeah. yeah. And Eddie actually has to say, sit down, you're getting it. Like, yeah. a, like a father it's almost a to a kid. You're getting yeah. overexcited again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And then it's like, oh, sit down, great idea. Yeah. And he's still like moving, isn't yeah. he? <laughs> it's, it's, <laughs> so, it's like the kid climbing on a sofa yeah. going, look at me, look at me. Yeah. It's literally embodied in, let's have a dance. So excited just to be playing games with his friend. Yeah. Like, it's actually a very sweet kind of episode yeah. when you look at it that way, isn't it? Because he's orchestrated it all yes. because Eddie doesn't talk to him otherwise and it's all going to plan and it's yeah. all great and then have you guys ever played chess with someone who you've just taught the rules to <laughs> yes yes it's uh, fucking yeah. unbearable it's yeah something about performance I noticed such a small minute thing when Rick oh, your gorilla penis <laughs> <laughs> sorry <laughs> have a big penis or is no, it comparable in size they, to a gorilla or to a gorilla's penis I, I, the, the Dr. O'Grady is actually being very very accurate because gorilla penises are only around two inches in length sure I thought it was really that. yeah, yeah. Yeah, I googled it. I don't know from personal experience <laughs> or anything. Always thought, oh yeah, it must be massive. So like when King Kong was climbing the Empire State Building, mm -hmm. if you were in the window and you had his groin just outside, you'd look out and go, I expect we're going to see something huge dangling here. Turn around and there's just like a little nubbin. Well, to Sorely scale, disappointed. it would still be big, wouldn't it? But to scale, like it, would it, would, it would still be the equivalent of two inches. Yeah. To scale, it would be small for him, but to us, mm -hmm. a car-sized grill yeah. penis yeah, is still wouldn't... pretty... You know, you I've got a enough. monkey on my back the size of King Kong and I'm being fucked by King Kong. Um, <laughs> sorry, I had to throw in that Superman's <laughs> quote. But no, right. apparently it's it's two inches okay. erect. I think this might have... I didn't get the joke when I first saw it. I understand now. The clock professional chess players mm. time games, don't they? So they stop and start on the move and stuff. So that's yeah. what that is. Brilliant, isn't it? It just squishes <laughs> it flat. Yeah. It's where Eddie's frustration is all in that massive slap down of the clock, isn't it? Like He's been up all night teaching... <laughs> the most idiotic person in the world besides him yeah. how to play chess <laughs> the the absolute ferocity of his frustration that's been yeah. channeled through the night coming into superhuman strength down mm. on no pun intended I've got to give props to the uh, <laughs> to the art department for mm. this is a great prop a lot of the time in shows like this where there's things being broken someone goes through a door or a wall you can see oh uh, well that one, was yeah. yeah with this this is such a good prop that mm. it's not until he flattens it that you realise it's made of something and it's not like it's made made of balsa wood and disintegrates it squishes it's made of cartoon it's made of yeah. cartoon clock <laughs> yeah yeah it looks like metal it yeah. does. It doesn't look like it's some kind of foam and, or... And yet if it was rubber, it would spring back. Mm. It holds that form once it's been squashed. It has some weight to it mm. when Richie knocks it off. Mm. You know, so you know it's not sure. made of something that's light. I'd love to know Maybe what that made of. Maybe it's a genuine clock. And <laughs> and <laughs> Eddie's like got super super strength. strength. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. They channeled the Hulk there. Yeah, but I love the way he's sort of through gritted teeth in the build-up to that, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> like really trying, he's testing his patient. Well, Richie goes first, doesn't he? As well, doesn't White go first? Eddie normally Eddie goes first because he's white yeah. yeah but does he go I don't remember him doing the move yeah he does then... the move and squashes the clock and then it's yes. your turn and then it's the am I black oh, or white after yeah. the big builder yeah, yeah, yeah. he yeah. moves one prawn forward okay yeah. sure now it's completely justified that he doesn't know if he's black or white because him he's black mm. there are no black no. pieces <laughs> yeah. 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 on so, his side it's a valid question in a way if they hadn't been playing it for the last five hours it's more than funny. five hours isn't it seven hours yeah. ten o'clock last night to five o'clock in the morning morning so seven hours so he's had the rules told to him a lot a mm. lot a lot a lot and because yeah, it doesn't does take that he long. think that move is is legal or what <laughs> i did think he doesn't care does he it's like you've been told so many times yeah. one at a time but is but this going to be a quiz things, question as to how many but, times well, I hope so, because really? I remembered it. Um, oh, okay, we won't do it then. Like, he's been taught it, but obviously he's retained nothing, so he's now just trying to bluff his way through it, yeah. and does so with youthful energetic bluster and vigour in but the middle of it he's so happy isn't it until he notices Eddie's reaction what makes Rick's ferocity there feel even bigger is the fact that Eddie seems so nonplussed through most of it he's just sat there with this stony look on his face and then at the end it's slight sort of amazement there's no surprise from Eddie at all is there the delight that Rick seems to have in playing out that like childish yeah. <laughs> his own little world of like if you were playing by yourself as a kid yeah, that's yeah. what it is isn't it that's sure. what obviously Richie's been used to do <laughs> I it's... was told of uh, this video game that I don't know did you ever get told of video games when you were little that the per other person was lying and it just made them sound fantastic I was told of a chess game where they're basically the pieces would morph into bigger <laughs> thing like like a 
a rook would morph into a big gorilla and bite the head off uh, <laughs> what? And, yeah. stuff. and then even things like you could get characters to team up and do double moves on things like that's not fucking chess yeah. what are you no. about no. But that's kind of what was going on in, in Richie's head, well, I guess. Well, it's a that's battlefield, sort of isn't it? Yeah. And it's like the over-the-top lads. Yeah. And the shoot that prawn and the way he just flings, he flings it yeah. off. So he like... sacrificed one of his own pieces, isn't he? Like, yeah. yeah. Just like, ah, which, is, which is a good chess strategy, actually, sacrificing yeah. pieces. Yeah. So, so, I don't know if Richie knows that. Something. <laughs> now, his move is a drafts move, isn't it? One, yeah. two, yeah. three, four, five, all over the thing. But it doesn't really count as cheating because... I, I believe Richie's move was an illegal chess move yeah, as I mean, well, yeah? Yeah, they're not playing chess at this point, are yeah, they? So it's yeah. just the cool, calm confidence in which Aid takes the piece, doesn't yeah, it? And yeah. just the satisfying thump clonk, of the piece. Clonk, clonk, yeah. clonk, yeah. Like knocking over the pieces and things. Progressive and Rick, Rick just <laughs> looks completely <laughs> mesmerised at what he's doing as well. Getting progressively quicker, almost like when someone does that knife thing mm. between fingers, dun, 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 yeah. you know. Smug way that Eddie says checkmate of course he's going to get a he has such face. a smug it's... shit eating grin on his face and you then. would have thought if anyone's going to start the fight actually it would be Eddie yeah. punching yeah. Richie losing it would but have yeah. too much. Richie's got nothing else left to do with that yeah. as he so that's the answer violence if someone I know or meet doesn't know the show maybe hasn't heard of it maybe doesn't mm-hmm. live in the UK and I want to introduce them to the show there are two scenes I send them one is this one and the other one is the bathroom fight with the okay, pliers sure. oh, okay. both fights there this is is probably for me the mm. best fight in bottom. It has such a variety of actions, of props, of yeah. it, it goes yeah. back it's and forward. Up. It's not so, one sided, yeah. you know. It's set up in so far in advance. Even the umbrellas, mm. you didn't think mm-hmm. then before right. it would be a fighting thing. The, it, the table, the whole table yeah. thing. Yeah. Oh, weirdly, the cactus doesn't get you. <laughs> no. <But laughs> well, well, that's gone flying. I think it, this probably yeah. is the best fight. Yeah, in, I think you'd be hard. Bottom push to argue I mean obviously all of them have got an element of something joyful and yeah. manic and wonderful in them yeah. but I think this one is it's like it is a tit for tat dance isn't yeah. it Yeah. I mean it's quite literally like a dance when he actually puts the umbrella into him and then <laughs> opens it yeah like you could almost probably score it to some classical yeah, music like yeah. Vivaldi and it's then down to the fridge where he yeah. ve- he conveniently falls oh. into the right place for yeah. no no yeah. this is quite <laughs> horrid <laughs> that, that reminded me of when I was a kid with my brother fighting you and you'd have a certain already, point yeah. where it was okay it's okay it's okay it's kind yeah. of tit for tat and then suddenly no no this is yeah. really going to hurt don't do that no look yeah. it, it's, it, it's horrific, usually yeah. either when they're about to do a proper Chinese burn mm. or when they've held you down on the floor and they're about to gob in your face yeah. <laughs> or you're literally drowning yeah. in the swimming pool when it used to be like yeah they're like no I Maybe actually am going to die Eddie you may have killed him yeah, yeah. <laughs> Eddie's so joyful with so that smile I but- have a niggle here Mm. From the first time I noticed it when you know he turns to the camera, can I throw away? That can I happening. guess what your niggle might be? On his last slam, it makes the noise, but Rick is already. That? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. I thought you were going to say it's the fact that it was either that or the fact that Rick says listeners when when no, they're no, in fact listeners. Viewers. I've written down. Yeah. I like that. It's one too many hits. Yeah, yeah. It is a mistake. It is a mistake, but fine, whatever. Is that just literally that the sound guy or whatever in the back would have just accidentally hit it it's too not many just times? The, it will be the sound, but it's also the action is obviously something that mm. he's hitting on to yeah. not yeah. Rick's face yeah. when he calls him listeners right after I don't have a niggle with that I find that that's just the character that's the hark wrong. that's and it's, the hark back isn't it hark back to olden to days and radio wireless yeah. 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 yeah and it's I think the only time Richie breaks the fourth wall in that way mm. talking to the audience in and this even episode, he does it wrong definitely. well no in this episode sure but I know he's kind of maybe uh, looked at the camera maybe but yeah. this is a proper yeah, it's the first time he oh. addresses the audience. No, no, so um, it doesn't do to haggle with Eddie too long on the roof. He says that to camera. Yeah, I well, that's not that quite as obvious. Kind of, no, yeah. That's just but, him yeah, saying no, it, mean, that yeah. he does yeah, yeah. look to camera and also he mm-hmm. does it in, in smells, doesn't it, when I go wrong. Yeah. yeah. But, but calling them listeners. This it's this whole sequence feels quite young ones, doesn't it? There's there's the violence aspect, there's the using something in the kitchen, namely the fridge, because yeah. the young ones was often based around things to do with the fridge. But there's the breaking of the fourth wall from mm-hmm. both of them, mm-hmm. acknowledging that it's a TV show by calling mm-hmm. the audience listeners. Yeah. yeah, that it feels quite young and ones. T V encourages violence. Yeah. Here I am. And <laughs> yeah. they're on te- yeah, they're they're clearly making a point in this episode, aren't they, really? That yeah. actually we are just Doing this, it's cartoon, it's not going to affect anyone who's yeah. watching it, but it's kind of having that little go of people who probably had accused them of sort of, you know, poisoning minds. Yeah. Um, what? In the same what? way that people do now about Grand Theft Auto or whatever. Yeah. I think it's like, so he's been given the TV, he's just been given what he wants, yeah. but he's so in the moment of, well, I'll just smash his head yeah. then, when 
obviously the thing to have done. Yeah. Plug it back yeah. in. Well, if I've got a niggle with that final bit, it's that the telly looks so very it fake. It does look fake. <laughs> Doesn't it? Does it? And I still to this day want to smash up a television <laughs> because of that scene. Yeah. yeah. I mean, when I say the telly looks fake, it's only the front bit of it yeah, looks fake. It Obviously, once it smashes over his head and it's got all the wires yeah. in, that's it's pretty convincing. All the innards. That, that's um, reminiscent of the uh, medicine cabinet smashed over Eddie's head. Mm. There's all wires stuff and stuff in, in there, yeah. isn't there? Yeah, it doesn't. it's not just an empty box. Yeah, but it's just, it looks like a drawing, isn't yeah. it, the front of it, when he comes out with it. <laughs> yeah, and he's yeah. clearly pretending to struggle with it, but it's yeah. not heavy. The bottom is a show that very rarely has uber close-ups on mm. faces mm. and yet to emphasize the amount of shit that's happened to rick's face <laughs> he's got the cuts he's got the blood running from both nostrils mm. they do an uber close-up but it's countered by the fact that rick is really oblivious and he's talking about you know we could just like work on our relationship yeah, yeah i love that yeah, he's not within what's happening yeah he, yeah it, rick doesn't yeah. think that eddie's going to be annoyed almost does he I mean, yeah. maybe it's because he is a bit concussed but also <laughs> like he's not in any he doesn't appear to be any pain or anything he no. doesn't seem to feel pain from the end injury the TV is just smash mm. and then he looks at the camera like ooh yeah. Yeah. if anything that's the most sitcom ending I think Bottoms mm. ever had it's essentially a kind of shrug of ooh mwah, you know. mwah. Yeah, yeah. yeah I think because we've already talked about it like you don't really think about that reveal of Rick with the TV when yeah. you do first watch the culture like, and there's oh, that ending you're like fucking fridge. Richie you absolute <laughs> <It's what? laughs> You're with Eddie. You're is like, it, what? Is there a TARDIS within that fridge? How did he get the fucking yeah. t- a TV behind the fridge? He hid that's that where he was. Yeah. So that's where he has to yeah. produce but it's it great, from. Isn't yeah. it? I, I hid it when he came round from Rumble. Yeah. So how would that have worked out? Right, we're here to pick up the TV. What TV? Mm. Yeah. Eddie didn't see that. <laughs> so <laughs> somehow, but it would have been like, well, no, we don't leave just because the TV's not here. Where's your fucking TV? Yeah. So there's no solution at all. It wouldn't, I don't know. Wouldn't I mean, do they have the right to search? A, I don't know. What were the rights of Rumbelow's kind oh, of Oh, massive. Beyond reproach. <laughs> Any final thoughts on this episode? The fight was phenomenal. It is absolutely one of my best ever favourite scenes in Bottom. It's mm. one of the two that I show to people. Not every episode has uber fights, but it's just such a good representation of the show. Yeah, yeah. so this is quality over quantity with the fights. This isn't a very violent episode, but it's the best choreographed fight they mm. have yeah. I think they're building towards it from the beginning even though we don't know it yet yeah so yeah. it's all payoffs that you didn't yeah. know were being built up it's genius yeah. but even if you remove that fight from the episode it would still be an incredibly strong episode because mm. of the quality of the writing the directing and the performances yeah that's what I want I mean I think Richie's speech about God I adore chess and yeah. just all of that build up towards the sort of Oscar Wilde kind of thing and his smoking jacket he likes the idea that's a of nubbin chess. of just yeah. Richie's little world like, that's yeah. what he'd like to be. And I think as well, in terms of the writing, there's the crossword, the mm. top of the show. Like, it's such a great setup. There are so many one-off throwaway gags through this. Mm. It doesn't taste like banana and peach. You start mm. it during the Gulf War. Oh, what would Bond do? He'd have a corset on, so no one would guess he was 60. Yeah. Bang, Actually, gone, move on. It doesn't even work anymore because Bond's well, because, more... Because Roger Moore isn't mm, yeah. Bond anymore. <laughs> yeah. Sparing in the sound effects, but the ones they do have, I think, very good. Yeah, I mean, that clunk of the firing pan across yeah. Rick's face. Sound effect for me of the entire episode. You have the dripping custard, which sounds quite disgusting. <laughs> There's the um, the frying pan, which does have a variety I don't of even like remember Big ben. the frying pan in the fight, but it can't really be a bottom fight scene yeah, without a yeah. frying pan. But yeah. for me, it's the squelch when the umbrella... It's, it, right, it firstly goes in, but then every time Rick opens the umbrella, yeah. you get a... Yeah. You know. the, the logistics of that, in actuality, I think it would be taking it out a bit further. I can think it actually <laughs> worked, but it's visually, it's yeah, a treat. It's yeah. weird. Yeah. The look of ferocity on Rick's face yeah. as he's yeah. doing that, as he's yeah. forcing Eddie back towards the yeah. kitchen area. Yeah, he's yeah. really, really relishing it, isn't he? And I think the only thing we haven't mentioned so far is the name culture mm-hmm. for this episode. Obviously, bottom culture, I've never really got that in terms of in context of the bottom joke. Okay, but yeah. I suppose cultivating sort of bacteria yeah, that, or something, yeah, cultures I figured, yeah. that you gather from a bottom. Germs from an arse or yeah, something. Yeah, but I also, <laughs> I, I just... think of that at all. Well, that's what I was trying to think about. It's like, what is the bottom culture thing? Yeah. Culture, bottom, bottom culture? Like, I don't know how it works, but mm. I think, again, this is one of the episodes where they actually have the title of the show in it as well. Because yeah, it says, yeah. we're having an evening of culture yes, and yeah. chess, 
you know, you know. And that again sums up what Richie's mm. wanted to orchestrate the entire yeah. episode and therefore yeah. evening to be. If there was one niggle for me, and it's such a minor one, it's the fact that as a result of this episode, I tasted what the Esther Ranson tastes like and it's disgusting. Yes. And Matt wasted twenty eight quid on them as well. Well wasted. I've got a great <laughs> story. That what a brilliant serves story. It is. You both right. I'd say this is a near perfect episode. But um, I, I think I've said before the two handers are generally my favourites from each of the series. Yeah. I think it's just because Rick and Aid are the masters and they're uninterrupted. Obviously, other episodes are very vital because you probably couldn't sustain these sort of episodes more than one a series, which is yeah. obviously why they did it that way. You need extra characters, you need some more interaction, but I think because it's such a perfect little half yeah. an hour. And they're so strong that you yeah. think of the whole series as yeah. two-hander. Which yeah, you is, do is, only is think of it. I would give Ed By's direction a special mention here mm. for this episode. The I think camera it was, work was great. Obviously Rick and Aid would know they have a certain way they want to play it because they wrote it, mm. but Ed By, I mean, he's done a lot of other good stuff. You know you're in safe hands and I think he had a particularly yeah. good Episode, the pacing yeah. of this is phenomenal. Yeah, isn't it? I yeah. don't think there's not a thing you can. Every bit leads to the next bit. Yeah, there's yeah. no. And again, wait. The props department. Yeah. Like, the custard must have been a bit of a pain in the ass to set up, mustn't it? Nothing looks cheap or fake except yeah. maybe the TV screen at the end. But yeah. yeah. Right. So I think it's time for a quiz, isn't it? Matt, it's your questions this week. Yeah, we're going to be doing 10 questions on bottom questions relating to this episode. First to 10 wins. You know how quizzes work. They're simple. Is it first to 10? Or is it best out of 10? Best out of 10. Fucking hell, we could be That was how it was last week, wasn't it? Feel free to play along at home or don't. Who cares? It's not going to make any difference. Shall we just quickly decide which fart noises we've got? Yeah. Can I have this one? What's that one? Quick fart. And Angela, what fart noise are you going to use as your buzzer? I'm going to go with... They sound different yeah. enough. Okay. Right. okay. Question one. How much back rent do they owe to Rumble those? I believe I that was, it was Paul. Paul first. £86.23. Perfect. Bastard. Okay. Sorry. One you didn't say four. pence. <laughs> <laughs> well, you didn't say new pence. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. Correctly spell this books. That was Angela. I believe... Stop stalling. It would be a double V. No. No? <laughs> no. This And then Z. Fair, no. Oh, Why? Oh. To How be do fair, you know? And then BXX? No, this is in the in the script. Oh, book. hey, you didn't say this, in the script book. Well, going it on. is. I mean, and also, to be fair, uh, he mounds out the first two letters. May I? definitely wrong. Ma- okay, Paul, if you want to try and steal. VZBKX. No. Uh, v- B- BKS. No, 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 no. Damn first, it. I've got to take your first answer. Fuck. It is V... And then three Zs and a B and an X. So oh, no. oh, okay. Box. Okay. All right. Long time since I've read this. But he does say V, Z, and then kind of mouths the other things. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. Question three. How much does Dr. O'Grady charge? That was Angela. £85. Pounds. Yes, £85. Pounds. Exactly. Question four. When setting up the chess pieces, you actually see some of the pieces around the house before they're Mm. revealed to be put on the chess set. Now, where do you see the skeleton before it goes on the board? Mm. That was Paul. I think it's on top of the organ. No. Okay. All right. I'm going to say that I think it's on top of the fridge. It is on top of the fridge. Fuck. Okay. Well done. Question five. Who left Richie his chess set? Great Aunt Dorothy. His great auntie Dorothy. I'll take aunt. I think auntie, he says yeah. both, doesn't he? She's my grand great auntie Dorothy. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm not gonna be pedantic. But that's fine. According to Richie, why wasn't Wellington a stupid man? Because he invented the Chelsea boot. Yes. Very good. Very good. Is the clues in the name? You're quick on the farts. That's was, what it is. Was that joke that did Wellington invent the Wellington boot? Yeah, he did. That's yeah. what the joke is. That yeah. you right. Okay. That, okay. Yeah, it's a throwaway gag. It's yeah, a yeah. Good one. Quick right. on the farts, but slow on the uptake. Right. <laughs> carry on. <Okay>. <laughs> <laughs> Question seven. What brand of sauce is the king? Daddy's. Yeah, so uh, Daddy's brown sauce, in case people don't know. uh, Is anyone in America, uh, that's steak sauce, Mm -hmm. basically what brown sauce is. Okay. Question eight. Which chess pieces are left? (coughs) Was Angela? Rook, knight, or racehorse. Mm -hmm. King, queen, bishop. Correct. Can you tell me what colour they are? White. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there was me hoping. Oh. There was me hoping you'd stumble on that last really difficult one. Yeah. <laughs> what colour are they? <laughs> what's Green. The, what's the score at the moment? 
It's uh, it's pretty not close. Oh, Angela's good. on five. You're on two. I shall fuck off, really. Yeah. <laughs> Next question. <laughs> what ingredients are make up Anessa Ranson? That was oh, Paul. Okay. Peno, Uzo, marmalade, and salt. Right, but if we're going with the no. last one, we need a glass. What? And Peno, we need, Uzo, marmalade, we need, sorry, yeah, we need a salt right. shaker yeah. to have the salt containing <laughs> it. Um, um, we, we need we, the jar we, that contains this, the marmalade. This is because I we, used bread. We need, we, yes. bread sandwich. we need yes. atoms well, of the universe. Need, yeah, we need Eddie's saliva, probably. No, I'm sorry, bread, bread, Richie's. bread is, an, is a common ingredient used in every sandwich. All right, all right, but I thought you meant I thought you meant filling. Sorry. Let's anyway, just, let's, right, go uh, on. Yes, what but you but you're right. Perno uzo. Marmalade and salt. Thank you. Uh, is this the last question now? The last question now. So I can't win this. You can't win this. Okay. No. No, we'll, we'll let you have the Esther Ransom. Right. According to Richie, <laughs> who is the villain to James Bond? He says Q. Q or yeah. whoever. Yeah. yeah. So Q. Right. Yeah. Okay. So that's four for Paul. Well, five uh, well for Angela. It's all just fun. Fuck off. It's all just fun and games. It's more fun when you're winning. Sure. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it matters not who won or lost, but how you play the game. V D V D But yeah, I thought you were gonna ask how many times that Eddie explained hundred and twenty four was ready. That yeah. was the bone right. the time breaking yeah. question. So next week I'm Quizmaster and the episode will be burglary. Burglary, bottom burglary, which is some sort of gay joke, I guess. I assume yeah, so. I mean that works. Bottom culture still but anyway. They don't all work, but Their know. culture is the bottom of the heap, maybe? Possibly, yeah. No. It's awful. Very big stretch. I hate it. Well, I didn't call it bottom culture. They did. Yeah, but your explanation I, think, I hate. I think, it, I think it's to do with bacteria up your bum. So, yeah, join us next week for talking about more of that sitcom that you all know. See you next week for burglary. Burglary. How do you say burglary? I used to say it wrong. Burglary. 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 I used to see burglars. I'm going to... Burglars, but it's actually burglary. So if you have anything to add to any of the points we brought up in this episode, please send us an email, Facebook or Twitter posts, whatever. We're at Talking Bottom on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. An email is 11 Parade at gmail.com. See you next week. Bye.